Speed is defined as distance over time. And in relativity, yeah. there's no uniform that's, that's, that's measure the, of distance and there's no uniform measure of time. So there's no measure of speed. But that's the high school definition. It's not the one we use. Well, what, what definition do you use? We tend to think that the, the uh, average person, as it were, is reasonably aware of things, thinks of the speed of light as an absolute limit in the sense that when we try and measure it, it always is the same. Is that the case? You suggested, oh, there's this easy thing we can do. We can just measure the speed and check is it the same. We can't do any such thing. There are things we can check. Michelson and Morley didn't measure the speed of anything. They set up an experimental apparatus that had some interference bands and they had it, it was in a, on a big marble slab floating in mercury and they rotated it and they looked to see whether these interference bands shifted. That doesn't measure the speed of anything. If different colors of light, as it were, traveled at different speeds, then it's easy to tell uh, there's a, a sudden nova, right? A sudden uh, star appears in the sky. Well, do all the colors come in at the same time? Right. You could you you would notice if no, it was first first the purple and then the red. Right. Um, but you wouldn't have measured the speed of anything by doing that. Oh, this is an abuse right. of language. Of course, it depends what you call speed. No, I'm just speed is defined as distance over time. And in relativity, yeah. there's no uniform that's, 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 measure that's, of distance and there's no uniform measure of time. So there's no measure of speed. But that's the high school definition. It's not the one we use. Well, what, what definition do you use out of high school? Well, for, for example, speed? for example, be the time of arrival of different colors. I mean, this is the obvious. Time of arrival measured by who? Uh, the person who looks. Like, so you have a star. And imagine if you start seeing blue first, and then the yellow comes, and then the red yes, comes. Yes, that was my example. So this is the example, exactly. So but that doesn't measure the speed of anything. Oh, this is a question of language, right? Yeah, I'm being careful about the language. Yeah, you I, think, I think the, the language is completely useless here. I mean, all you care about is actually whether there is a phenomenon or not. I, and then it's basically irrelevant whether you call it the speed or not the speed. Talk of speeds is just misleading if you're talking about relativity, because it's not a well-defined concept. It's not a well-defined Quantity. Because I mean, if I were to ask, what, are, what speed are we going at right now? What speed are we going at right now? The answer is there's no answer to that. But traditionally, physicists have uh, been inclined to think the speed of light can't be exceeded because it would require infinite energy to do so. As you get, if you've got any mass, that is, as you get closer to the speed of light, um, you need more and more energy to get faster. And so you need an infinite amount to go faster than the speed of light. Is it true that the, the speed of light is a limit in the sense that we need infinite amount of energy to, uh, to go beyond it? There's a practical question about particles. I mean, we have to be clear, there are all kinds of, you. when you say, can anything go faster than light, you have to be a little clear about what you're talking about. Can we make an electron go faster than light? You can go to CERN and you can try and make them go faster and faster, right? Pump more energy in and make them go around this ring faster and faster. And for sure, they're never going to make, make those particles, those electrons, go faster than light. That's a well-defined question. Um, it, it would take an entire change in all of physics for, for, for reasons. I mean, you can say it's because they get heavier, you have to put in more energy. It doesn't matter. We know, right? We keep putting in more energy. You, you make incremental changes into, this, in, in, into how quickly they're going around the ring. But not everything's a massive particle, right? So again, if you talk about just causation, can I snap my fingers and have an effect outside the light cone? an effect to, faster than light, well, that could happen even though no particles go faster than light. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't require particles to do that. So you really have to be, first of all, clear about what... John, John Bell, I've talked about Bell's theorem, which is very, very relevant here, although we're not seeming to address it, uh, once gave a talk, and the, 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 the title of the talk was What Can't Go Faster Than Light? And there were big posters up uh, when he gave it on the campus. John Bell what can't go faster than light? And he's walking to give the lecture. He sees someone wrote some graffiti on it. And the graffiti was John Bell, for example. Right. So, yeah, John Bell is the kind of thing that can't go faster than light. I'm pretty sure that a, an electron can't go faster than light. But, what, but that's not the inventory of all there is. And there are well-defined questions like, can there be causal influences that go faster than light addressed by Bell's theorem? 
And we know the answer to that is yes, there are. There have to be. Okay. Would, would you agree that, 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 that there might be things that go faster than light, but they're not the one, the particular material stuff that we... No, I think material use. stuff can go faster than light. And I think the, the, the disagreement with um, what you said, that you would need an infinite amount of energy to push it, within, within relativity, yes. But if relativity is not right, no. And this is exactly the point Claudia has made. I mean, she has a theory in which different polarizations of the gravity and so on. You have different speeds. So I think, you know, it's clearly true that if you buy relativity and you say relativity is right and what you said is right, on the other hand, it might be wrong, in which case that contradiction just doesn't exist. Remember, at some point, Copernicus could not put the sun in the center and the earth going around it because we would fall out of the earth. There was a no-go theorem for the Earth moving because according to the principles of Aristotle physics, you'd fall off. Yeah. So, so the so question is, you clearly have to change the premises of the theory for this to be possible. And it is possible to change the premises of the theory by changing the symmetries. And there's something we all agree about, which is nothing is sacrosanct, right? Of course, any physical principle. I mean, we could be sitting here when Newtonian physics was so successful saying, oh, it's sacrosanct, we can't touch it. Well. You know, it turned out to be wrong. We had to replace it with, with, with quantum theory. We had to replace the classical theory of space-time with relativity. We may have to replace those. We probably will. I mean, we all agree that nothing is sacrosanct. It's the only thing we agree on, I think. But I think, I, if you ask me the prospects of ever having, just off the top of my head, a way to make a, a, an electron in a vacuum beat a light ray in a race, I think, no, it'll never happen. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.